Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jennifer. We've been married for 14 years. And we have five young children. We started blogging over 10 years ago, sharing our marriage story in hopes of encouraging other husbands and wives to draw closer to God and closer to each other. We have authored over 10 books together, including our newest book, Marriage After God, the book that inspired us to start this podcast. Marriage After God is a message to remind all of us that God designed marriage with a purpose. To reflect His love. To be a light in this world. To work together as a team. Using what He has given us. To build His kingdom. Our hope is to encourage you along your marriage journey. As you boldly chase after God together. This is Marriage After God. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. We're Anne and Jennifer Smith, your hosts. I hope you have an awesome week. Uh, I just want to start off by sharing a little thing that I'm doing with the van, Jennifer. You're going to tell them about the van? The van. Okay, but it was my idea. Like, give me a little credit. It was definitely your idea. <laughs> uh, so we love to drive, which we'll talk about in actually today's episode. And we don't have a normal van. Like we it's not a, a minivan. It's not a, what is it? Well, what people call it? <laughs> they call it... <laughs> <laughs> it's the full size. It's a Ford Transit. It's a okay. big old boy. It's huge. Uh, it's got all the seats you could want. For all but the you, kids. But you know what it doesn't have? <laughs> Until now. A toilet. <laughs> but I put a toilet in that van. And the reason we did that is because we like to drive. We like to go on road trips. Especially with all our kids. It's so easy to... That's how we go see our family. Yeah. <laughs> we get in the car and we drive. But it takes us like 15 hours to get there. So imagine being on the road with five kids. That's a lot of bathroom stops. And sometimes that's all we're stopping for. And so I told Aaron, we need a bathroom in here. Even if it's like something easy to sit on and 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 throw away. And so I've been, uh, something I've been doing as a hobby is working, building vans. And so I took my van and I built this box out in the back and I put a toilet in there. He showed me it today. It actually looks really awesome. I'm really excited to use it this spring, <laughs> summer, fall. All of our adventures. Oh, I yeah. told him, even if we go, it's change everything. <laughs> even if we go to the lake for the day, imagine how nice it will be when we're out on an adventure. And even though we're kind of close to home, we don't have to rush home. If someone has to use the bathroom, we can just yeah. use that. And if you're going to put like a handheld, Shower thing. There's going to be a, a hot water shower in the back. Not like to take a full blast shower in the van, but, but like we can rinse the kids off. We can rinse the boards off. We can, it's just so going to be cool. awesome. Guys, I'm stoked about it. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> uh, I have a friend helping me and we're doing a pretty good job and it's coming out nice. So there's a toilet in our van now. It's called the ad- adventure <laughs> wagon. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. And it fits all the kids plus one if we needed another seat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving right moving along. Uh, guys, we, just want to thank you for being our share warriors. Um, Aaron likes to mention that every week. And I think it's an amazing thing that you guys have been sharing your episodes and it's just been a huge encouragement to us, but it's also just a great way to get the news out or the, the word mm-hmm. out about the marriage after God podcast. And so we just wanted to say thank you. And before you move on to that part, okay. I just want to say, we don't always do this, but if you do share about our podcast to social media, we might repost it. Like if we catch it on time. Yeah, yeah, because we like to do that. And it's really cool seeing people do it. So just a little encouragement. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Second part, we don't always do, but I wanted to take some time out to personally shout out a specific family who I think is probably listening right now. Uh, and it started with some friends of ours who I just want to say these friends have been such an encouragement to us and yeah, they have I, we really appreciate them. So Stan and Jessica, and I know you're going to be listening to this episode. Thank you for being our friends. Thank you for all the personal encouragement that you have poured into our lives, especially about the podcast, because you have asked us about it, asked us how it's going. You've asked us how you can help uh, in any way that you can. So I just want to say thank you to them. But I also want to say hi to all of their extended family, because I know you're listening too. Um, Jess actually sent me a screenshot of one of their family's group text. Uh, showing how they were sharing the episode on love. And she was sent oh, it really? as an encouragement to me. And I just thought, how sweet that they're all listening and, mm-hmm. and talking about it. And then I see, guys. I see her sister on social media shared every once in a while. So thank you to all of you um, who are listening and specifically Stan and Jessica's family. Mm-hmm. We appreciate we you. you guys, yeah. We love you guys. 
All right, as usual, we have a free thing that we want to promote to you guys. We love making these little resources, and this one's been up for a while, but we haven't talked about it for a while. It's our date night conversation starter download. It's totally free, and we came up with all these date night conversation starters. So you can take them, you can go on a date and pick one of the topics and use it to start a conversation. But you don't have to go on a date to use it either. I mean, you could do you it could at the kitchen bed, table. Okay? You could sit yeah. at the table. In front of the fireplace. But dates are awesome. So yeah, you, should, <laughs> you should use this as an excuse to go on dates with your spouse. <laughs> yeah, like I have to. Yeah. Um, so all you got to do is go to datenightconversations.com, all one word, datenightconversations.com, and it's completely free. You just fill out a little form, and you download the little printout, and print it out, and you got all these conversation starters. All right. We're excited to share today's topic with you guys. We are going to be talking about just a whole handful of ways that you can have fun as a family. And we think that it's really important to talk about episodes like this. They're not as heavy as the ones where we dive into scripture and we're talking about... We like to go back and forth. Yeah. Like serious, funny, light, heavy. And I think that this one's important because we're getting into a different season. So lighter weather and warmer Mm -hmm. weather, hopefully. Uh, But moving on into summer, you know, just getting some ideas out there to say, hey, are we are we having fun? Mm-hmm. But you, you have a note here that says this is our funnest episode. And I actually thought it said the funniest episode. And I was thinking, why is this going to be so funny? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's funnest, the funnest episode. Not funniest. We should um, do a funny episode. This though. is like one of those kind of episodes that's just super inspiring. Like, I hope you walk away from it just going like, I want to do everything that was on their list. Yeah. And then we should redo <laughs> everything. <laughs> and then we the should list. go back and redo it. Yeah. Um, why, and we're also going to share about why it's important to create a fun atmosphere, uh, regardless of what you may be going through because joy. Mm, because we, joy because because we're christian and we believe in god and he is our source of joy and so we should make not? a shirt that just says because joy <laughs> because joy exclamation mark <laughs> um also if you hear the word family and think well this doesn't apply to me because we don't have any children uh, let us encourage you that your spouse is your family so if you're listening um remember this it only takes two to make a family <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's true should have called this the quote episode because I have a few more good ones to share with you guys. Um, Okay. But if you're listening, if you happen to be listening and you're not even married yet, I also want to encourage you that you're still part of a family. If you are part of the family of God, yeah, yeah, with the family of God and, uh, and there's families within that family. And so you can, there's always people to spend time with and have a good time with. So you can adapt this episode and adjust the ideas to create your, um, you're fun with whoever you spend time with. Right? That's true. Okay. And some people are just really good at having fun. I know. They don't even have to think about it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to think a little bit about it, well, but that's okay. And for those of them that are, those of them, those that are you. out there that are like us, this is going to be fun because it's just some ideas. Yep. And it's definitely not an exhaustive list, but some stuff that we tried out this year. So we just hope that this um, episode encourages you and we hope this uh, creates just some creative conversations in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And if we learn anything from 2020, I don't know about everyone else, but we (laughs) learned how to have a lot more fun at home (laughs) in the nature. Um, And we did that. Yeah. And also last episode, we talked extensively about building a strong marriage and in this episode, it's kind of an extension of that conversation. True. Uh, and we, because we've, t- we always talk about this, that you got to be able to have fun. Enjoying each other along the way. Enjoying each other, delighting each other, being friends mm-hmm. with each other. So mm-hmm. what do you do with friends? What do you do with people you, you like? You spend quality time together. <laughs> yeah, often doing fun things. <laughs> Build memories. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, I also want to note before we get into some of these ideas, because I never want people to, um, you know, cringe or, or get a little like, Oh, I can't do that because of finances. And so if you hear us say something, um, that might cost money, that might cost money. I just want you to understand that everyone's going to be in a different place and might take that idea and do it a different way and do it within their means and do it how they can. And so, um, what I don't want you to do is hear the list that we're going to share with you and say, well, I can't afford that, or I can't do it, or we can't take the time or we can't fill in the blank. Because those are just negative thoughts and and they justify up front why you can't participate in having fun in these ways. But what you can do is just take this basis of inf- in inspiration and create your own thing and mm-hmm. do it in your own means. So I just I just wanted to encourage you there. there. 
Um, mm. it's actually, it's actually beautiful that we can't all do the same things all the time. Our limitations help create diversity in our families and in the body of Christ. And that's a good thing. Yeah. So, we're all, we're, we're all, we're all in different places in our lives, yep. different, um, walks all for the same purpose for Christ. But yeah, if we all don't do the same things and that's okay. It's good. It's all good. So Aaron, we were just going to jump into kind uh, of a list of fun things that we've done as a family or our friends have done as a family, uh, just, you know, to give them inspiration. So do you want to kick, kick yeah, it off? This is one that I, I've kind of been waiting for. <laughs> we've been doing it and sprinkling it in here and there, but now it's at the point where we can't get away from this. Well, so we, we, when we got married, we, we loved spending time with our friends and playing games, mm-hmm. board games. Mm-hmm. And we had one, one kid, Elliot, and it was awesome. And then we had two and then we had three. And what happened is we had this shift of like, we, we couldn't do often like have game nights. We just, that's the phase of life we're in. Like you and me or us with the kids or what do you say? Well, you and me with our friends. Mm. And so just, I mean, we wouldn't stay out late. We just, our way of doing and things changed. Our kids were so little that we could do some things with them, but not to the extent of like actual yeah. strategic games. But now we've, we've hit a little landmark. I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but Elliot and Olive, uh, I think we mentioned it before. Now they they can play games now. Yeah. And they love it. And that's what I meant by we can't get away from it because they <laughs> beg us every night. Can we please stay can up after we put the boys to bed? Yeah. We want to play games all <laughs> the time. And but better than that, like um, they, they'll play with our friends too. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're kind of now in this transition where we're going back to being able to play games with our friends yeah. and with our kids. Oh man, I'm, I, I'm so loving good. it. Yeah. So unfortunately uh, they're, really good at it and <laughs> They're better it's frustrating because they win a lot. Mm, so that, good. That's awesome. So we grabbed a few classic games for the kids at Christmas. Do you remember those? We mm. got um, Guess Who? Oh, and they love that game. Yeah. Fr- yeah, and it's such a simple game. So if you don't, if you have young kids, Guess Who's an easy one to, for them to grasp. Yeah. And, and then uh, we got one recently. I think we've mentioned it in another episode, but Cover Your Assets. I know it seems kind of funny to say, but it's a card game and it's super... Uh, lighthearted and easy. Super easy to learn. And it's really competitive and really fun because you, you build up these assets and you're trying to get as much as possible. And then someone can just boom, take it. Kind of like, like no. in war. Yeah. You get to challenge each other. It's mm, super fun. It's, and Elliot so, and Olive love it. game night. We wanted to start with game night because that's one that you invest in kind of up front, but then you have your closet full of games that you go to as a family. And those are the mm. ones you bring with you if you go on a trip or to grandma's house or whatever. And so just um, building a family culture where you experience games together. Well, another thing we like to do is uh, tent camping. We've done that pr- only in the last five years. I don't think I ever did it when I was a kid. I, I did. Know. Did uh, you? Yeah, I did tent camping when I was growing up. Um, and we did it in Africa when we uh, yes. were first married. <laughs> yes. And that left a, a, not the greatest taste, but I think oh, I, it was I, fun. I learned, <laughs> I learned to get it back with our kids yeah. because Tent camping is awesome. I think um, something that's super memorable to me when I was a kid, but also even now that we're making memories with our kids is just how you go to bed, you know, bundled up, but it gets really, really cold in the middle of the night and you're just like half asleep looking for extra blankets or sleeping bags. And when you have to go to the bathroom and you're like, is there any animals (laughs) out there? I heard like a little noise in the thicket and you have to go out and do it anyway. Uh, The other fun, um, memorable thing is just, um, you know, building fire pits at night and then smelling them in the morning. Yeah, I just always love that smell. And then sitting around it in the morning. It's cold yeah. and you're sitting around a fire. I love having a hot cup of coffee. That's true. Even smelling bacon, cooking on the barbecue. <laughs> always. Um, but the kids love it because they can run around and just, you know. Get dirty. Yeah, get dirty, <laughs> throw rocks, play in the, you know, creeks, throw sticks. They love it. Okay, so some of these uh, examples that we give you guys today will also have options for. So the option here would be, Maybe you can't get out to go tent camping, but you can t- tent camp in your backyard. And we did this this Which last year. Which is a year. great alternative. <laughs> it was so fun. It was so fun. Um, things, there's, there's usually not big animals in the backyard. Well, I was going to say things stayed a lot cleaner because like usually the tent gets dirty and stuff like uh-huh. that. But it was nice because it was just on our on grass. <laughs> And we had access to a really nice bathroom. so And shower. Usually the kids go to bed <laughs> first and then I'm, I sneak in to do, go take a shower. <laughs> it was really fun. So tent, backyard camping is good. Um, what else do we like to do outdoors? That's fun. We, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily outdoors. I guess it kind of is. Road tripping. We like to. <laughs> that is outdoors. I guess. We're in a car. 
Okay, we're indoors, it? outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> we like to we like to drive places with our family because we get to see a lot of things. Uh, we get to move. I don't know. We like driving. Yeah, we do like driving. I we like to go and visit places. Um, think of things like a botanical garden or what's a botanical. <laughs> A botanical. <laughs> they're, they're way better. They're botanical gardens. <laughs> or a historical site, you know, something that maybe you looked up along. Um, We've had some really dream. interesting, like, little pull, <laughs> pull-offs. Like, you look on the map and you're like, hey, there's this thing we need to go to. And, we, and it's like it's like the side roadside attraction, but we're like. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes this, we're way off. Yeah, you know, we're like this is not pack. what we thought it was. <laughs> uh, no, but they're often like really unique, weird things that you would never find. This last look, summer, we went anyways. to one of those uh, vortex houses. That's where, the one I was thinking yeah. of. <laughs> that was strange. I'm trying to tell you, and you're, everything's like sideways and weird, and <laughs> we're in a vortex. That was fun. Our kids remember those things. Okay, and then while you're while you're on the road trip, you can play games. You know, old school games like um, we play the yellow car game, and so anytime someone sees a yellow car, they get points for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yellow, yellow car yeah i spy is another one and then if you see a yellow camaro you win that's like the winning point <laughs> in our <laughs> is house a, is a bumblebee. i mean our car <laughs> um the abc game so you can do this with just about anything that your family's interested in we've done it with produce before where we go okay so one person has a they, they say apples the next person says bananas B. okay you get you get the point mm. we've done it with people's names the other thing f- fun about road trips is junk food <laughs> that's a personal, personal favorite, favorite of mine <laughs> bacon and candy. junk food <laughs> and candy candy bacon is really good your options for each of these is just like what snack goes with it <laughs> well i base all of our adventures off of what we're going to eat <laughs> you're funny so. uh oh i have a little note here um having fun going on road trips can also include a visit to grandparents house mm-hmm. or other family members and those are often the, the simplest road trips for us and then our kids love it because they just get to spend all day every yeah. day swimming or playing with grandma and grandpa or whatever and they love it speaking of road trips this last year we got to go to a few national parks and so if you happen to be close to one uh, that's a great way to have fun as a family and just get outside and adventure together uh, but if you aren't close to one maybe taking time to plan out that trip yeah it could be affordable. Just drive to one, go get the little pass for the day. I don't know. It depends on how far they are, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Spend a few days there. We we want to go back and see some more uh, national parks. That was actually What park was your favorite this last year? Uh, Yellowstone, of course, uh, because of all the animals we got to see, um, which, by the way, we didn't see the animals until like the second to last day, <laughs> but it was awesome. Um, but I really loved Glacier, and I want to go back to Glacier, mm. spend more time there. We didn't spend, I don't think we spent enough time there. Glacier was really, yeah. really cool. Um, also on that trip, we got to go fishing and we had, you know, gathered up some fishing poles and we got to try, try fishing. It was a little cold for the kids. (laughs) And so it got hard. And then I had baby Edith, uh, in the ergo on me. And so I was a little bit worried with Wyatt having a fishing pole and, and Elliot working with the hook, you know, so I stayed back. I didn't help you much. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Well, we didn't catch anything either, but it was still fun. We went on, it was like on this little shore with rocks and casting it in and like get it reeling it in it was fun yeah i think for fishing the fun thing about fishing is just spending that time together and all the little intricate details of yeah. you know what it requires <laughs> well putting the bait on the hook hard, and then yeah. like them casting it out and just holding it like they just love that stuff yeah cool we should do that more this mm-hmm. year <laughs> something that we do a lot as a family uh is we love like beaches we love the sand i was gonna say anything with sand so lakes rivers oceans yeah. we love going to the coast like we can go and just literally sit all day and the kids will just dig holes in the sand make little sand castles go find shells d- draw in the pictures in the sand they just love it we don't even really go swimming we just sit well, on the beach <laughs> we um our coast is the oregon coast now and it's just it seems like every time we go it's really cold and windy even though we've mm. gone different times throughout the year. And so we just make sure I, I pack up, you know, sweatpants, suits, like we you know, know sweaters. We have, yeah. And they bundle up and they go out there and play still. So they're happy campers. And then we got one day one time where the sun was out. And the, the, so the ocean was cold, but it was like low tide. And so the, the water was really far out. And there was like mm. these little pools left over that were warm. And that oh, yeah, was actually a lot that. of fun. We just, that and they were cool. like shallow. So we yeah. just like sat in these little pools of warm beach water. It was fun. <laughs> So getting outside, um, you know, doing adventures, 
it honestly, even, I mean, for us, Aaron, having fun as a family could be as simple as walking, you know, in the evening around the neighborhood or exploring local parks and local trails. We've done that a lot. Uh, Going for walks around the neighborhood, it it gets energy out for the kids. Um, It's also just a different scene. Mm -hmm. It's like a different, uh, like they're, if they're in the home all the time or especially this last year, Um, just going and getting out. Like today I just took the kids to the park Yeah, and they ran around and were playing and jumping on the slides and they loved it. I think if you have older children uh, doing maybe a more, um, more intensive hike could be fun. You know, something that really challenges you guys to get up that mountain or hill or whatever it is get to the peaks yeah and see some really awesome views and i think for i just wanted to share for you know if you have younger kids something that i've been doing recently with our children is when we're out in nature we'll do these scavenger hunts where i get really energetic and i'm like okay everybody in everybody in mommy's gonna count to three and then i'm gonna say something and you have to go find that thing and then bring it to me so, you know, I'll have mm-hmm. them all count to three and they're getting all pumped and excited. And then I'll say, you know, pine cone <laughs> mm. or um, something green and they have to rush to go get it. Go find it. I've done that before. Like uh, find me a, a red leaf and they have to find me a red one and then a yellow one and then a green one and just. Oh, falls easy. Yeah. yeah different things that they have to look for. Um, but speaking of scavenger hunts, it makes me think of, um, do you remember a long time ago we did geocaching? Yeah. I don't know if that's still a thing. There's Possibly. probably a bunch of geocaches all over the world that no one even knows about anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> if, you, if you guys don't know what geocaching is, just Google it. <laughs> yeah, you you it's like it's like hide and seek for little items around the all around the world though. Uh, that'd that's be a, fun that, to do as yeah, a family. Yeah, because sure. I'm sure there's one probably right around the corner from your house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next uh, thing that we wanted to share was just very simple, but family movie night. Um, this one also comes with options, so you could do forts in a movie so a big sheet fort pillow fort um i've seen on instagram someone else recently posted a a pillow pool so they get to pick between a pool or a fort and the kids picked a pool and i'm like what is that and it was just a bunch of blankets and pillows in the living room and they all jump yeah like huge pile that sounds really comfortable that sounds fun yeah and then maybe i was just gonna say maybe add in a fun snack like popcorn yeah we've we've also done a movie on the ceiling Oh, yeah. I set up my projector pointing it straight up and all the kids lay down on pillows and with blankets on the floor. They really love that. And they just, they're looking at, and it's like f- weird. And they, so they love that. They love the weird, like we're looking up at the ceiling, watching a movie and it's, and it's usually huge and all awkward because it doesn't get, <laughs> is not square on the ceiling. I also feel like for some reason it's something that they forget about. And so when we say, oh, we should do the projector tonight, they get really excited about it. And- they do. It's like they forget and then they remember how fun it and is. And if you don't have a projector, uh, you can actually find them really cheap on, on Amazon. And you can get these little small ones. They may not be the highest quality, but at least it's fun. The kids won't care. They'll, they'll watch it. All right. Um, so we mentioned this next one on one of the previous episodes in this season um, on delighting in each other. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and share? Well, it's one of your favorite things. <laughs> that story. <laughs> the kids love it. No, I do. <laughs> Dance parties. Just get on some goofy, fun, like d- dance music. And be silly. And you just dance. And mm-hmm. what's really funny is all of the kids dance. Truett is the best. Like, in my opinion, he just sits there and he has, he has this, you <laughs> Way can't about see him. how I'm doing it, but his hips move <laughs> and like he, he like hops around the house and like he flicks his hands like he's cleaning something off his pants. Do you think Truett's moves are the best part about that? But I think it's his facial features. He, he contorts his, his face and just his jaw away, to the side, like his jaws to the side and his nose is scrunched up and you know, he's just having a good time. So, and then Elliot like hardcore dances, like, <laughs> like banging his head and like jumping around. And then Olive is like ballerina. <laughs> doesn't matter what the song is. She's like ballerina by herself in her own ballerina world in circles and twirling and, Everyone's got their own little way. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really fun actually. So dance party, super fun. Uh, another thing that kind of involves music, Aaron, is when um, the, our kids love putting on a show for us with instruments, and as they, they just get make it up as they go, they kind of make it up as they go, and they have a lot of fun doing it. And so over the years, we've tried to invest or accumulate musical instruments, even though Aaron and I are not musically inclined <laughs> and we don't know anything. at all. Uh, no background here, but I did take lessons for a short while on piano and I, I was starting to pick it up. So I, I want to stay doing that, but our kids put on a show. So they'll like have fun just making up songs, singing, dancing, playing the piano. 
Well, and because we went through a season of piano, uh, Elliot's done, has he done two recitals now? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think did Olive do one? Olive didn't get to do the recital oh, part, but she's been picking it up and learning. But it. they saw how recitals work because we bring mm-hmm. the kids to watch, and so when they do it, they'll they'll say, "I want everyone to sit down." They'll say, "Hi, my name's Olive uh, <laughs> and five. Smith. I'm five years old, and I'm going to play." And then she just makes up a song. <laughs> but it's now turned into like a band show where she'll then introduce all of her brothers and all of their ages and what song they're going to yeah. be doing, and it's just super fun. So. For those of you out there who have musical talent and knowledge, and you guys are already probably doing this as a family, I bet you have a lot of fun. So it's for probably, anyone... It's probably much more musical. <laughs> for anyone that maybe this sounds interesting and you have a musical instrument laying around, you can play around with that or I don't know. So <laughs> I, I actually did this today. We have like my... my you did everything yeah, today. Yeah, my parents <laughs> gave us a, a karaoke machine. God bless their souls. <laughs> And um, so Elliot was on the microphone. Olive had the electric guitar. Uh, Wyatt was on the Wyatt and Edith were on the our little electric drum set. It's like this little <laughs> thing that we got on Amazon. But Edith was literally like hitting the. I'm I'm only surprised because I know how much she really loves the microphone. Yeah, but <laughs> she wasn't. She was drumming, and it was so fun. It was fun. There, it was loud. It, it's it, it was like a big metal band. I don't know why they were playing so funny, like rock and roll. I think it's just a big noise making session. And yes, we love it. We love spending that time together for, for extended periods of time. <laughs> <laughs> Another way you can have fun with your family is building stuff as a family, creating something. Maybe it's a garden box. I'm sure we'll talk about that later, but, uh, building a tree house. Uh, we have a tree house say, in our backyard and, and you always let the kids, when you're in the process of making it, you let the kids participate. So here, Wyatt, hold this hammer or, uh, or get know, up there with us to get, paint yeah. or get to be up there while I'm building. And it's just exciting. We did this other thing where, uh, the kids wanted to start saving money. And so we had all these Mason jars for them. Cause we did the three, you know, save, spend, oh, and yeah. give, and you built boxes for them so that they and had, had Elliot go cut like the wood. And then I used a nail gun and he would hold it. And we were, we made, he helped me make, make all of them. And they loved it. Mm-hmm. They loved the whole process. And then we took them outside to paint them. And they, so each one looks a little bit different and they got to be creative with that. So I think making projects together as a, as a, it's just a fun family affair. Uh, along the lines of building, here's some ideas uh, to make your home more fun. Uh, just having fun things like a tree house, uh, a tire swing. If you have the right tree for it. Uh, I wish I had a tree that we could put a tire swing on. That'd be awesome. We don't. Um, A birdhouse, a trampoline, um, for those that you like the danger of trampolines. We had a friend who had a big dirt pile who uh, let their kids have, you know, you know, those plastic dinosaurs, all different shapes and sizes. So it was like a dino pit. And then we had another friend who did a fairy garden. And so there's a lot of different options for, you know, what your kids are interested in to make different parts of your home or backyard, you know, a fun zone. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think these are great, great ways to spend time outside with them and having fun with them. Yeah. One thing I want to add someday is a zip line. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we went to a friend's house who had a zip line and ever since then the kids keep talking about it too. Well, I keep talking about it (laughs) because I want a zip line. (laughs) One day we'll have the zip line. We will do a zip line one day. So um, another way that you guys can spend time together as a family is, you know, do you remember growing up here and um, it was getting into the evening and we would turn all the lights off and play hide and seek mm-hmm. or sardines? I remember those were some of the my favorite memories as a child. And our kids love playing it no matter the fact that, that we know all the hiding spots in the house now. <laughs> they still <laughs> want to play and they still go hide in those spots. And then I, I, get, I enjoy pretending I don't know where they're at. <laughs> it's fun. And then actually every once in a while I can't find them. And I'm like, okay, how did you, where are you at? And then they like totally tricked me. So don't forget about those, those kind of older games. And you know, maybe you guys, um, you listening can think back to your childhood and what memories you had and just bring those games back with your family. Reinvent them. <laughs> yeah. Make them your own. Some other things our kids love to do is make paper airplanes. Not all of them, but Elliot specifically, Olive will do it. And they get intense about yeah, it. Our house is like, they're like trying to make these, you know, which one's going to go faster, which one's going like to look the coolest. Or how am I going to tweak yeah. this and what's going to happen And then to we it? just have paper airplanes everywhere in the house. <laughs> Another thing that we like to build together are Legos. So I know there's some yes. serious Lego builders out there. I would consider myself a, well, I just really like it. You like Legos, yeah. <laughs> I do. 
Uh, and all of our kids love Legos on different levels. Uh, Elliot has his way of doing Legos. Olive has her way. Her princess um, way. <laughs> Wyatt's just now been getting more and more into Legos for, for the first time, which is really cool. And then True just tags along whatever else is doing. I thought I thought I put the boys down for a nap, you know, like two or three days ago. And I walked oh, yeah, by Wyatt's room and like I could that. hear I could hear like little it almost sounded like a little mouse. And so I peeked through the door and Wyatt looks up at me with these big eyes. Like, uh oh, yeah, he got caught. And he's like, sorry, mom, I just, I had to build this. And he pulls up this, like, you know, it looked like a big Triton thing. Like a sword. <laughs> sword he makes like a spear. swords or like Any little kind of flyers weapon. or yeah, weapons. But he just had a blast doing that. So building Legos together. You could even set up a competition if you wanted to, uh, you know, who can build the best tower. house or tower. <laughs> or Bridge. <laughs> Airplane. <Whatever>. Spaceship. <laughs> Spaceships. <laughs> so... Uh, you can, um, as a family, flying kites. Uh, I don't know if it's how much talent is involved in this, but <laughs> we've attempted a couple times. Yeah, just getting a cheap kite and then wowing the kids with get, seeing if you can get it to fly in the air. <laughs> uh, playing chess in learning you chess. Like this one, I I made the note of learning chess because I'm more of a learner when it comes to chess. But it's a it's it's a this is a good one for like a one on one with one of your your little guys. Um, or your older kids too. And it, it allows for time to talk mm -hmm. and to be strategic, which is a good thing. Okay. So something we did last year that was really fun was we found a company in town that could rent these virtual o Oculus. If you haven't heard of it, it's called Oculus. Yeah. It's a, but it is 3D, virtual reality. 3d goggles. Yeah. You put them on. So you rent these goggles and we got two of them. And so two people could go at the same time and you put them on and it's like, it you could see, trippy. You can see in 3D and you have these wands in your hand and you're like playing the game. And so you might think, how is this a family oriented thing? But it is because everybody else who's not playing is just, just sitting watching there you. watching you. You guys, <laughs> you, when I tried it, for you're the, waving in the air. And nothing. <laughs> oh, when I tried it for the first time, I actually fell. It was so disorienting. You, you make sure that you have like cushions around. Yeah. You. But, but it, it, that was really fun. The all, and all of the kids liked it. And there was, of course, there's games that we don't play, but there's the simple ones that it was like, you're flying. Or it's cutting like, fruit in half. Or you're cutting fruit in half. Yeah, ninja fruit. There was, was this called. one where it was like an office space. Why it and, loved the ninja fruit one, by the way. Yeah. There was one that I kind of got into that was like an office space and you could just go around and push buttons on the computer or the fax machine or working. pour a cup of coffee. Yeah. And it was like, this is so strange because it feels like you're really doing it. And we just rented those for the day. I would so, do that again. Yeah, I would do that again too. Um, also, speaking about that kind of yeah. style of fun, video games. And if you can pick one that's multiplayer. Yeah, like Wii's um, or um, Mario Kart. Yeah. You know, the games that you could play with with your family. Um, oh, okay. the, <laughs> this, I was, <laughs> I was looking, I was like, what is this <laughs> one? So I put the note on here, measure game. But Aaron, you're going to have to explain this. So one. my kid, I have my... Like every once in a while I'll have a tool in the house and all my kids are like, can I just play with that tool? And I'm like, no, you can't just play with the tool. One of them is my tape measure. And so I have a tape measure sitting there and all of my kids want to play with my tape measure. They're fun. You pull this tape on and like slides back. I'm always terrified it's going to hurt and them. And finally I, I just came up with this game where I would have all the kids go in the bedroom and I would measure something in the in the living room. Like the arm of the chair. Or like the, the length of the couch or the <laughs> size of the, 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 how wide the door is. And I would, they come back and I said, okay, you guys need to find something that's 42 inches long, 42 <laughs> inches. And then they go around the house, around the living room with the tape measure, trying to measure and find the thing that's for, they'll find something that's like 40 inches. And they're like, is it this? I'm like, no, it's 40 inches. It's 42 inches. <laughs> it, and it was actually a really clever game and the kids love it. Like they just, they'll run around and try and figure out, is it the picture frame? Is it the door? And it also is like an educational game because sure. they're like, they're learning how to measure things <laughs> and what, you know, how working with numbers. And uh, so that was I think, I think interesting and fun. People listening with like 12 and 13 year olds are going, that would never work. Like they're just. No, <laughs> this is, yeah, younger kids. Our kids are little and they just get really wowed by simple things like that. But again, you can always adapt this to make it what, what I your don't family know. needs. I, to be honest, I think <laughs> they'd be surprised. They should try this with one of their 13, 14, 15 year olds. Be like, okay. We have this really fun game. If you can find the thing that's 32.7 inches. I'll give you a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> I, think they'll go, I think they'll go around measure stuff. <laughs> um, it's also, definitely the doorknob. It's not I, the doorknob. No, it is the doorknob. 
along this line of like, you know, guessing game, I came home one time and found a random kind of like shriveled up piece of paper on the table and it looked like a a map of our house. And I was like, what is this? And one of the kids told me it was a treasure map that you had drawn up for them and you you were playing another game with them where they had to like go and find something according to the map that you had drawn. I I think I put something under some rocks somewhere. (laughs) So that's another fun thing you can do. Yeah, and they had to they had to fo- they had to follow it based off of the drawing, like there was like a picture of a tree. And they're like, oh, that tree's <laughs> over there, and they're like, well, how far from the tree is it? <laughs> um, okay, so moving on, a couple of other fun things that you can do as a family is um, something creative or artistic. So. Uh, getting the paints out, you know, and this could be as simple as finger painting all the way up to like get some oil paints out or acrylic and buy a canvas, you know, for each person in the family and do something really special that way. Um, But Aaron, something that we, our family really likes is there's a, a tutorial guide on YouTube and the kids love it. And so we'll just stick that on and everybody will get a sheet of paper and we do, we do it with them because it's, of course it's YouTube and we try yeah. to be safe. Yeah. Um, but the, the channel itself is totally safe. We're just not sure about the commercials and, and whatnot, but we'll sit with them and they literally will learn how to draw something yeah. for the first time and they follow it. And then if they're like, they, they can just start over, they can put it on slow-mo to watch it in slower. Uh, and they, they've learned to draw a lot through watching tutorials. Okay, so the next kind of group we have here is having fun with food ideas. So, See, this is my category. Yeah, here we go. Bacon. I like food. <laughs> um, so having a baking day or... A baking day? No, <laughs> no, baking in general. No, you said bacon day. <laughs> <laughs> bacon everything. Um, uh, and this, this can be for special holidays, like think of Thanksgiving coming up and you set time aside to do that. Or it could just be for no random reason. Oh, wait just for a random reason yeah. that any you, random reason. any random reason that you want to bake with your kids. Maybe bake to bring some treats to people from your church yeah. to bless your neighbor with. That would be awesome. Yeah. And I think um, w- what I also think about with this one is creating a fun family dinner idea that maybe is unusual for your family. Um, I can't think of anything specific right now, but let's say you, you guys are used to getting pizza well, instead of getting pizza, make pizza, make pizza and make, make it your dough, own. Yeah. So find a special way that you're fi- you know, your family's going to like that thing that make you bacon to go on top of the pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's going to come up a couple more times. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else uh, fun that I did last year was, uh, for lunch, our lunches are usually pretty simple, you know, a sandwich, uh, quesadilla, mm-hmm. things like that. But I thought, um, our, f- I want to make this a fancy lunch. And so I got however many cake stands I could find. I lit candles. I got a bunch of different types of finger foods and fruits and cheeses like grapes and carrots and hummus. And I made just this feast. Was it what they call it? Like a charcuterie? No, it was more like a a smorgasbord. (laughs) But they got to pick whatever they wanted. Yeah. And so then I, yeah, I kind of, they were outside playing. It was actually a really good lunch. I called them in and they're nuts and apple slices and, uh, dried fruits and it was really good it was really good and they came in i'm like they were so confused they were like what is this with the huge smiles on their face and i said you guys can make your own plates get whatever you want have fun with it and they had a blast and so and they ate all of it yeah that's a fun idea um something else you could do is a scavenger hunt we've done this aaron where uh we leave notes around the house and they have oh. to go from one place to another, and then on the back of the last sheet of paper, you know, tell them where reveals you're, the thing that yeah, they're doing either what you're gonna have or, for lunch or where you're gonna go for dinner. You know, you could be fun with it. Surprise them with Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> Scavenger hunts are fun. Um, another thing that Jennifer, you've been getting into this over the last several years and loving this is gardening. Oh yeah. Um, and all of our kids get into it and I've got it. You have me making garden boxes, and <laughs> getting soil and <laughs> I l- lightly suggest that you maybe No, it's help fun. Me. Cause then we, uh, like one of our go- going back to the whole, um, you know, going out and doing like little road trips. One of the things that we love to do is going to nurseries Yeah, and we walk around That's and true. the kids get into the carts and we look at all the plants mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, that tree's awesome. I want one of those trees, you know, <laughs> or, you know, we, we particularly like fruit trees. Mm-hmm. And so we're often just looking at fruit trees and 
you know, we, you planted an orchard in our backyard. And it has definitely become a family thing to build the garden, take care of the garden, weed the garden. Prep uh, the garden for, for the beginning of the season, yep. prep it at the end of the season. Harvest. And yeah, getting the, um, getting the fruits of our labor, mm-hmm. literally. Uh, sp- specifically, we'll have areas of the garden like uh, all of last year. I think she had the snap last two pe- years. Last she's... snap peas. Oh, yeah. Or hers. So the year before, she did mostly flowers, but she had planted some peas, you know, ar- around on the outside. And she just loved being able to go pick them and eat them all the Whenever time. Whenever she wanted. And so last year. And it's veggies. So last, go for it. Last year, she knew that I had previously given Elliot his own box for strawberries and other things, cucumber. And so she begged me, Mom, can I have a box? And so I gave her my middle box. Uh, so now my tomatoes are dwindling down. I only have one box for tomatoes, but no, not this year. We're going to do tons of tomatoes. <laughs> the kids have just had a blast doing that. And so she filled hers full of peas and she would, anytime friends were over or whatever, she just, you know, have so much fun doing that. But something that I think about with gardening, um, is just how the time spent out there exploring it and, um, you know, maintaining it really builds unity it brings our a family closer together and creates a culture where your your kids want to be a part of that well ours specifically because we yeah. have fun doing that but it's also a useful skill yeah but when you think about having fun as a family you're you're creating a place that they're going to want to come back to over and over and over and over again even long after they're gone i believe mm-hmm. right Don't you no say and i and we get to enjoy it as it happens we get to see it grow we get to see it flourish we also get to see when like there's mistakes and that, so there's a lot of stuff that happens and it's over a long period of time um especially like when you go away for a few days and you come back and it, it just seems much larger and you're like yeah. oh my goodness look at all this mm-hmm. the tomatoes are red now you know yeah um, and also it gives the kids something that they can own mm-hmm. so elliot just loves that he can go and pluck strawberries he doesn't have to ask. He can just go get his own strawberries, eat them and enjoy them. Olive goes and gets her snap peas and then they get to share too and talk yeah. about, you know, hey, you can have one, you know, oh, that big one. I've been waiting for that one. You can't have that one. Last year, Olive did her own harvesting one day and she like, she went out there with a, a little pot and she gathered whatever she could find that was ready. And she came in and she prepped lunch. Do you remember this? And she set out all the Mm-hmm. all the uh, plates she set out a cups of water and a fork and she put all these different veggies some on the plate peas, some cucumber slices and some then she called everyone lunch is ready and i was just like oh my goodness all of you are so sweet it was cool she even put some edible flowers on there it was pretty what yeah are those it was so called? pretty nasturtium nasturtium yeah it was super fun something that we also really love as a family is bike rides we love true. it. That's we, true. we, especially now that two of our kids, we're, we're working on our third one to, to start riding his bike this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but two of our kids ride their own bikes and they just love to go. Um, and we have to keep up with them or we have to tell them to slow down. <laughs> but <laughs> we, for me. we like to ride around our neighborhood. We like to go to specific areas like parks that have big bike tracks. I think my funnest, my funnest bike rides are when we're out there for like two, three hours just cruising. It's, it's a, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, it, yes, it's takes time and it takes energy, but you're out in nature. Easy, you get to see things. You're in a new place and you know, feel the wind. And it's just, it's so, it's exciting. The kids love it. They like to go just adventure and ride and, you know, have freedom. Um, I don't have this in my notes, but I wanted to share that, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about it, but the children's books that we're working on, mm-hmm. Aaron, uh, I wanted to share a little peace with them listening okay so we've been working on the the there's two version two versions of what we're working on there's a there's two different books two different books so there's a story of a mom and a daughter and a story of a a dad with the son and in the dad and the son's version there's going to be this really beautiful picture of uh the son with the mom riding riding bikes together and i'm just so excited about it (laughs) because it's one of my favorite things to do in our family and we're working with a friend who's illustrating this book and I'm just, oh, I'm so excited for you guys. So hopefully that will be out this year. Stay tuned. Some other ideas uh, just to move through a few of these Nerf gun wars. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's really fun. Just you can get cheap ones and just running around the house shooting Nerf guns at each other. Um, and also as a family going in Nerf gun uh, bombing 
friends <laughs> just showing up and, <laughs> and uh, get the neighborhood involved. attacking them. No. Um, uh, along these lines, water balloon fights. We've done more water balloon especially fights. in the middle of winter. No, no, the, oh, coming into summer. Summer, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was trying to think of other outdoor things like this growing up that I did with my family. We played a lot of catch. Uh, we played something called home run derby. We played 500. These are all like baseball hitting games and catching games. They're super fun. Uh, and volleyball. So mm. don't forget about all the sports you can play as a family to have fun. Doing science experiments with your kids. Uh, an easy one. I just did this the other day. I, I just, I'm like, Hey, let's take hot water and cold water. Which one do you think will freeze faster? And then they're like, Oh, probably this one, this one. And I, I, I measured the temperatures nice. and I wrote the the information on each cup and we put them in the freezer at the same time. And then we checked back at 30 minutes and an hour. Um, I was wrong. They were right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, just finding ways of getting them fascinated with science and, yeah. Uh, learning uh, they're always, in a fun way. They're always fascinated by that. And you're so good at them, go, so good with them at doing these experiments. And I just wanted to encourage those listening that, uh, you you know, you don't have to homeschool to do science experiments. You can do these no matter what. And uh, I know they have books at the library. They have books There's at Barnes & Noble YouTube or YouTube channels. It. Go on Pinterest and find really easy ones. So yeah, that was a really good one. Um, one, I don't know if this was an experiment, but we did it, uh, was it like two years ago was the butterfly experiment? Yeah, That's what we really like call a butterfly it. kit. It was a kit, uh, where you have the little cage set up and then you, you know, send them this code and they ship you live butterflies. No, they're, they're worms. Oh they're, yeah. Uh, caterpillars. <laughs> That's right. Live caterpillars. You said worms. worms. <laughs> live worms. caterpillars. <laughs> and you put them in this little environment and they turn into butterflies and you get to watch the whole process. It's pretty bloody actually. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> the kids were like, you could have what just happened? Said messy. Mm, yeah. They right. were messy. But, but do you remember being out in the backyard and I took some photos on my when phone we let them go, yeah. when we let them go because they kind of just stuck around for a little bit. Well, they, they just sat on their olive's finger Oh yeah. and it wouldn't fly away. And Olive was so stoked so, that it would just so sit cool. there. And then it finally flew away and she's like, no, come back. <laughs> Uh, that was really fun. Uh, another thing that I, uh, we wanted to encourage you guys with to have fun as a family, and you could do this every day if you wanted to, but making work feel like play. And I have a good example for this. Uh, it's not our example. It's actually a friend's example. Does this work for adults too? make work feel like play? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, we are getting better at this, but our friends, they blast music after dinner and do this whole cleanup party. And I know because they've showed it on their stories before on Instagram and their kids are like smiling while they're doing the dishes and singing while they're sweeping. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm thinking, what magic is this? <laughs> so you just, you just got to find those moments and make the best of them. Something you came up with this, uh, last Christmas, Jennifer, which was a pretty creative thing. Creative was, it was a, epic. Chris, a Christmas box maze. <laughs> we got a bunch, a bunch of bo uh, cardboard boxes, opened them up on both ends and then taped them all together and made this like maze. Okay. We put, it, we stuffed like Christmas lights in them. So it like, took over an entire house for a whole day yeah. because we made these tunnels. <laughs> we made these tunnels that went through to the different rooms and yeah, went to the living so room fun. and I, then I made a, I made a PVC pipe, uh, igloo. And I, we put sheets over it in the middle of the maze. It was a lot of fun. It was so fun. And then we, uh, I put wrapping paper on the front that said Christmas maze. And But you guys can do this without it being Christmas. You could do it for no reason at all. Uh, at, you can actually just Google uh, what did cardboard, it? cardboard box, maze. box maze. And you'll probably see different types, different options to show up. But um, You can also have fun by just finding ways to squeeze in surprises as a family. So this is probably going to be the parents for the kids, but you know, those random, like let's have hot chocolate, mm -hmm. you know, let's. And don't even tell them, just sit them down for normal lunch and then just serve hot chocolate. And everyone's like, what is this? Yeah, so sweet. Why are we having hot chocolate co um, with marshmallows right now? Or you can go more extravagant and surprise them with family coming into town or Which I don't know, a surprise a birthday party. Grandma yeah. just shows up. Yeah. Grandma. Ah. Yeah. So Along those lines, celebrations, you know, just mm -hmm. making sure that you're not uh, skipping over those milestones. Like, for example, just, you know, one of your kids starts to read, you know, learns how to read, go get ice cream, go celebrate, go affirm them, 
Um, yeah, I, do I don't think we can have too many reasons to celebrate. I think like we can't like there's it's good to celebrate things. No, we should be celebrating every day for something. Yeah. Why not? Cause we're supposed to be grateful <laughs> people. <laughs> this is really our, our reminder to ourselves that our time together with our children is so short. Yeah. And so brief. brief. You were just yeah. looking at pictures. A friend of us sent a friend of ours sent pictures of our son and his friend. Like how many, how old was he? Three, two, two, and three. Yeah. And Jennifer was like, I just want to start crying. Like, why are they so old? Like, it, it goes by so quick. Mm -hmm. I was just texting with my sister-in-law about how big our kids are getting. And uh, she said, she texted back to me and she said, time is a thief. And I now I'm like, yes, you're right. It is. And I need to remember that in a way that is like, we don't get it back, you know? Mm -hmm. We only have what we have. So uh, that was a pretty big list. And I'm sure there's gonna be more things that we're gonna try this year and figure out. And I hope it was an encouragement to everyone listening. So my, just some ideas. Uh, so they have this list. They can adjust it. They can use it, use it as an inspiration. But more than doing the things that are fun, what kinds of things might stop us or get in Ooh, the way of us having fun? Because that could happen. Yeah. I think the immediate, the immediate thing that I think of is the inconvenience of a mess. Like my mind, my flesh automatically goes to what's going to require... Yeah, messing okay. up the living room for the fort or whatever. Yeah. yeah. All the different things. Um, or just being lazy. Yeah. Lazy is a big one for me, bro. <laughs> like get up and go throw balloons at each other. That's sometimes, another thing. I don't want to be all wet and cold. <laughs> sometimes it's just the lack of thoughtfulness. So I'm just, and which is one reason why we wanted to have this for, uh, you know, inspiration for you guys today, because sometimes our minds just not on specific ways of having fun as a family or, or in a marriage. And so, uh, it, it requires a bit of inspiration to go, oh, mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking that, you know? I think another thing that could get in the way is when we're not right with each other. Like if you're just, yeah. if you're frustrated, if there's, attitudes. you know, a little off attitudes, it's going to be hard to be like, let's have fun. Yeah, <laughs> so, totally. So being on the same page, being right with each other, mm -hmm. uh, walking in unity with each other helps you be like, hey, let's, let's bless the kids. Let's yeah. do something creative and fun. I think another thing that could get in the way is technology. I think that, you know, if we allow ourselves to be entertained by things that have to do with technology and we're not really bored anymore, we're not going to mm -hmm. go to that creative level of, I need to make fun. Yeah. You know? Which we you know, used to do before cell phones existed. <laughs> well, we're a part of that generation that kind of we're grew up with We're the last generation it. that yeah. grew up without them. Like we were bored yeah. in our childhood and then the second part was technology, but... I wanted to share this quote. It's by Albert Einstein. It says, creativity is the residue of wasted time. So that idea of like being bored is good. Mm -hmm. And then from it comes some fun. Yeah. Steve Jobs said, I'm a big believer in boredom. Boredom allows one to indulge in curiosity and out of curiosity comes everything. That's good. Which is true because <laughs> when you're curious, when you want to know how something works, when you want to create something, that's where that innovation comes from. That's so good. Um, and being bored, we will be motivated to create life as we know it. That was like an unknown. Yeah, there's uh, no quote. name for that. <laughs> um, finances is something that could stop us. I know I talked about it earlier and mm. I, I wanted to make a point about that, but um, it doesn't need to. Yeah. And that doesn't mean spend that you don't, it's money you don't have. It means that we can still have fun and be creative. You just got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, simple is good. And it's not affirmed enough in our fast paced, have it all kind of world, you know, yeah. often simpler is better. Yeah. Like I, I, there's been so many times, um, we've actually just a quick side note. I was just thinking about with this simpler is better when we've gone on uh, road trips in the past or go to see family. There's often things that are where our pa parents live that we don't have access to here. Yeah. And so we're like, let's go do this thing. Let's go to a amusement park with our kids. Let's yeah. go do something yeah. that's creative. And it takes the whole day and Even it's exhausting and it's hard yeah. and it's expensive. And then it's like, all our kids wanted to do is sit in the sand at the beach <laughs> all day. Yeah. Right. So we, we've been learning how to say, what's the thing that's going to be the most memorable. Yeah. We have an idea of what it is and often it's not actually what mm -hmm. would be. So simpler is often way better. I th and I think to that note, it requires knowing one another, knowing your spouse, knowing your kids, knowing mm -hmm. your likes, your dislikes and really utilizing that information to create that family culture of what is it that you guys do? What are you going to choose? Uh, I think that that's good. Another unknown or anonymous quote that I have here is we didn't know we were making memories. We just knew we were having fun. And I love that. I love the, um, 
the innocence of of what's motivating us it's it's mm-hmm. just it's pure joy <laughs> we just want to have fun uh and then biblically <laughs> proverbs 15 <laughs> yeah there's some quotes here proverbs 15:13 says a glad heart makes a cheerful face but by sorrow of heart the spirit is crushed uh, and this idea of just there's we can produce gladness of heart and just and have joy in our homes and have lightness of mm-hmm. hearts um, because there's going to be times of sorrow mm-hmm. and it, it does crush the spirit. Uh, and so we need to make sure that in the times that we're not like that, that we are having fun, that we are enjoying what God has given us. What I also like about this proverb is that it says a glad heart makes a cheerful face. And so the impact that we have in each other's lives to say, Hey, if my heart's posture is a certain way I impact or I affect you. Yeah. It's going to show. Yeah. And we should know this. We should, we should know that we have this power to make a cheerful face. If you want to make your child light up and smile or your husband think you're goofy, you know, mm-hmm. like we have that power. So anyways, <laughs> Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be, be glad, glad in it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. God has made this day and we can rejoice in it. Okay, so we, like I said, this was kind of an episode of quotes. <laughs> I liked it. But the another one that I wanted to share with you guys is by one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> um, it's easy to remember and can serve as a reminder that we should seek the fun in what we do with the people that we love. And it says, today was good. Today was fun. Tomorrow is another one. <laughs> That's true. I like that. So we want to encourage you to go on a date this week and talk, talk about having more fun in your relationship with each other. And as a family. Maybe right. you could brainstorm some ideas. Yeah, um, write a list. Write a list of things that you'd want to do and, and figure out your budget and and f- then, you know, strategically figure out who's going to do which part of it, you know? What might be fun is like a way that you can uh, surprise your kids. Like maybe something that they don't good. even know that's coming. Okay, we're definitely doing that. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Cool. Uh, uh, okay, well, that wraps up today's episode. I hope that it was super encouraging for you guys to hear fun ways to have uh, what... <laughs> Yep. Fun ways, ways to have fun as a family. <laughs> yeah, ways to have fun as a family. <laughs> Just do it, guys. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about some things we're grateful for okay. and that, to end this episode. Um, I'm grateful for nature. I love how it expresses the invisible attributes of God. Uh, mm. And you see it everywhere. I actually like, I love listening to a river. Is oh, wait. That... I just uh, was reading about how the many rushes of water is like the voice of the Almighty. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. And I love, I, I, I love listening to it. I love listening to it as it rushes over the ground. I love yep. watching and listening to trees as they dance and sing in the wind. We, so we were good. just listening. I said, look at the trees and it, it was quiet mm-hmm. and they were just wrestling back and forth. And so I, pretty. I was saying how much I love just listening to him sway like that. Mm. That's so good. Um, I'm grateful for having the opportunity to write a set of children's books. I briefly mentioned it above about riding bikes. Um, Which are hopefully coming soon. this year, maybe? Yeah, it's been a really great maybe. process. We have a friend doing the illustration for it, and I just met with her about it. And you guys are so beautiful. I wish I could show you some screenshots or something, but, um, but it is coming, and we'll let you know as soon as it's ready. But uh, we have those coming. It, it, I, I, I feel so blessed to have been able to uh, write them and participate with you, and guys, Aaron, they're awesome. and write them. In writing them, it was a dream of mine since I think high school to do a children's book. So this is really awesome. Yeah. God's good. There's two of them. Not one. <laughs> two. <laughs> I can't wait to see what my children think about them. I think they're going to treasure them. Yeah. And we hope our, we hope you guys like them too. Uh, so would you share what you're thankful for, what you're grateful for with your spouse, with God, and with a friend? Uh, and let's just spread gratefulness. So we're going to end in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for the adventure of fun. We pray we would be people who seek to have fun and choose joy no matter what we are experiencing. We pray we would be intentional to be the initiators of fun. Please infuse our minds and hearts with ideas and the will to make life fun for others. We pray our marriages would be seen as lighthearted and full of joy. We also pray we would not let anything get in the way or hinder us from doing even the most simplest of fun things with our families. We pray our joy and laughter is contagious, a reminder to those in this world that you are our source of true joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, We love you all. And uh, as usual, our share warriors, would you go out and share this episode? Uh, Share it uh, with someone who needs some ideas for fun. Uh, share it with a friend, with a family member. 
Um, we love you. We'll see you next week.